mine I think is significantly shorter um, than than those, but also but but written with love. I wrote it. I think it took. I, I think I was able to do this in about fifteen minutes, uh, which leads me to think that like every time I want to get writing done, I need to have someone give me like a time deadline that I have to read it on a stream because I wrote like five hundred words in like fifteen minutes, which is like that's great. Uh, I, I would love to be able to write that much all the time. Um, <laughs> I don't think I have a title, but maybe maybe this is one of those stories where after we read the story, we can we can craft an appropriate title. <clears throat> There's also no humans in this story. Um, oh, interesting. So change of pace here. Um, well, you're bringing it back to the roots. If, if this is like ogres and goblins again. Uh, not that so much. Um, no, we'll see. Goblin these nuts. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. All right. It was a rough night out on the lake, like so many nights before. The kind of night that almost makes a ship crave the touch of another vessel. <laughs> Howling wind. Crashing waves and thick, blanketing fog made for a navigational nightmare. Still, the valiant, three-masted schooner fought her way forward. Suddenly, an imposing shape loomed menacingly, a hulking mass in the low light of the foggy midnight sea. It was... Could it be? It was! A freighter. A big one from the looks of it. Long and sleek, yes but with an admirable girth that would make most vessels on the lakes envious. <laughs> the schooner had little time to gawk, however, as the freighter was barreling down right upon her, roughly amidships, seemingly hell-bent on splitting her asunder. <laughs> the schooner tried desperately to come about, hoping to avoid the worst. Hoping to avoid the worst with such a sizable beast of a vessel. But to no avail. The impact was fierce, and the freighter's bow plunged into the schooner's flank, slicing into her wooden structure like a penis through butter. <laughs> <laughs> the schooner knew it should have felt wrong. She knew she shouldn't be getting herself into situations like this, certainly not with a big, bulging brute of a freighter like this one. No, her builders would never have approved of this. The freighter must have seen her in the fog first, and had pulled back hard on its engines in the hope of stopping entirely. Owing to these mighty efforts, the weight of the collision wasn't all that it could have been, but still far more than the schooner could take. Deeper. Deeper. The freighter's bow sliced, plunging well beyond what the schooner had ever imagined possible. No one... Nothing had ever been this deep inside of her, not even that summer when she spent several months getting dry-docked in Sandusky. <laughs> the freighter's engines finally came into reverse, fighting heroically to pull the bow free to little effect. It was a tight fit, and the schooner wasn't giving up so easily. The waves did their work, too, smashing against the vessels in their harsh yet sensual embrace. Back and forth they rocked small progress being made in the extrication, only for the bulky ore carrier to be forced back into the schooner's gaping starboard cavity. Pushing, twisting, grinding, thrusting in the waves, the two ships danced, until yet another impact was felt on the schooner, this one from her stern. The rocks! She'd been pushed onto the deadly dagger-like submarine ridge at the mouth of the bay. <laughs> With the schooner now caught from behind, the freighter, managed, the freighter managed to finally pull out, fully spent. Gathering its energy, it turned and set engines to full ahead. The schooner gazed longingly at her paramour. As it sailed off into the mist-draped horizon, never even managing to make out the gold letters of the stranger's name across the stern. The schooner had never felt so full, physically or emotionally though mostly physically as her hold was now rapidly filling with water and the full fury of the lake began to tear her apart. 
A loud crack was heard, and a mighty canyon appeared to open between her third and fourth cargo hatches. It was the end for the humble little boat, but, oh, what an end it had been. She went beneath the waves, first her bow and then her stern. She drifted down, down into the cold, murky depths, split open, sunk, but supremely satisfied. <laughs> I am disappointed that you didn't make a single joke about how wet she was. <laughs> that's 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 Bush League. Uh, well, no, what I Kelly's story was Bush League. What I what I realized what I realized is that like if you just use all the same words that shipwrecks are written about anyway, it basically is erotica because it's all very penetrative and like a lot of it talks about <laughs> things like. Things like gaping open and being split, like it's like, oh, this is this this could easily be like morphed into an erotica. So, well, call me the Gales of November the way I come early with that story. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's okay if you finish a little schooner. <laughs>